Oh, I was muted. Oops. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. I was muted and didn't even know it. Oh, no. Now I'm going to have to send this to... Uh, oh, I hate... Oh, I got follow the list. Follow the list. Oh. Oh, it'll fix itself. It'll fix itself. Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> we'll wait for a few more people to come on. Hi, Gail. Hi, Pat. Hi, Zach. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Erica. Good to see you. All right. Let's get this, uh, let's get this show on the road. All that good stuff I said to you before I unmuted my mic, it's gone. I'll just edit it out before I upload it to YouTube. Hmm. Hi, Gil. Good to see you. All right, now we stopped with the Lord's words on prayer. Here we go. Pray like this. Verse 9. And so, pray, y'all pray, thusly. So, all the folks that want to come up with all the different prayers that are going to be super duper successful in, hi Mike, in having God answer our, our prayers, all of those folks, Jesus says, pray thusly. He, and he, then he begins the Lord's Prayer. So, all the folks who have all the... Um, the great plans, uh, when I was, when I was uh, about, I don't know, it was about 10 years ago, the prayer of Java has come up. All these different strange prayers to all, all of them to avoid this prayer. The one that the Lord told us to pray. The way the Lord told us to pray. Now, I would think that if you were trying to figure out how to pray, hi, Christopher, Spring, Texas. I used to live around Spring. Still live in Conroe, Texas. Um, served there for 10 years. 11 if you count Vicarage. Do Vicarage really serve? I don't know. Anyway, all these different things we come up with in order to try to come up with a means in which God will answer our prayers, avoiding Jesus saying, as he does in verse 9, pray thusly. Todd is here? What? It's Jackson. My voice got really high there. Sorry. I would think that we would pray the way the Lord told us to pray. With the words he told us to pray. That seems like a no-brainer to me. But we have cr good Christians who believe that they should pray in all sorts of ways other than in the way that the Lord told us to pray. Priscilla in the house. Priscilla, I got to tell you, whenever I see you, I want to break into my Elvis accent, but I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it here. Um, just first, let's take a look at the prayer. Um, but just remember that when the Lord asks, teaches you to pray, he tells you to pray in this way. That seems to be the, what I would do and the way that I would pray. Because he said so. I mean, I... Our Father in heaven. Now, um, this is good news. This is very good news. We should take this as good news. 
We should let this be good news. And the good news is that the God who made the heavens and the earth, the one in the secret place from earlier, um, that God, the only God there is, is our Heavenly Father. He's our Father. Our Father. Not somebody else's dad. Not somebody else's father. He's our Father. The only God there is, is our Father. Our Father. That, don't miss that. We say this all the time and we forget that the, that the God of the universe would bid us call him Father. With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our dear Father and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence we may ask him as dear children ask their dear Father. God is our Father. It's astounding and hard to believe, but true. And he would have us call upon him as children call upon their father. I used the example yesterday of me in my room and I would call out to my dad and I wouldn't even have to use my loud board card voice and um, uh, he, would, he would answer. Um, so, I mean, in the same way, this God, the God that made the universe is our father. Let's see, Todd, if I can get G4 here. Done. All right. So. Your father, your father who sees what is done in secret would reward you. Um, uh, Thomas, my own son is here. I'm so happy. Um, our father in heaven. And the next three petitions rattle off and they're very, very similar. And they all sort of make a group. Holy, let your name, it's a, um, it's an heiress passive imperative. Um, and it's a third person, that makes it a, is that a Justin? Um, uh, your name be holy, command. Your name be holy, holy your name. Um, now holy is an interesting word. I sincerely hope that you didn't spot that I just um, spilled um, good stuff on myself. Merch store. You know, this cup is so old, I need a new one. Look at it. It used to say HT. Holy. Uh, we think holy means um, like pure or righteous. It, it means that because, um, <laughs> Christopher, uh, stay safe, Christopher. It means that because, um, because it means set apart. It means set apart. It means, um, I'm going to pull myself up a little bit. It means set apart. It means his. You see, God is unique. He's different from every other entity in our universe. He's, he's unique. He's different. Um, he's uniquely his. Pastor Simino. Do you know I'm so old that I, at LSU, when I was uh, a brand spec and new, uh, Lutheran, I taught Pastor Simino um, Sunday school. That's how old I am. Pastor Simino, thanks for being here. Any help that you can provide would be helpful. Any help that you would provide would be helpful. Hmm. Um, hello, Megan. Uh, um, 
God alone is holy. Holy God has holy people. Um, holy by him. He's a holy God, so he has holy people. Hi, Pat. So the, uh, the prayer here is, let your name be holy. And what's important about this is, just a little bit from the catechism, God's name is certainly holy even without our prayers, but we pray in this petition that we be kept holy amongst us also. God's name is holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as children of God leaves holy lives according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches or lives contrary to the word of God profanes the name of God amongst us. Protect us from this, dear Father in heaven. He's holy. His name is holy. We're praying that it would be holy amongst us. That we would receive that holy as gift. So all the gospel already. That he is our God. And our Father. It takes Jesus dying in order to make that true. <laughs> um, it takes Jesus dying in order to make that true. Jesus died, and the first words on Easter morning, Hi, Pastor Rake. Um, ooh, um, the first words on Easter morning, when, when Mary grabs hold of it, is, is stop, it's an imperfect, stop holding on to me. I, I've not yet returned to my father, but go and tell my brothers, um, that I'm returning to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. That he's our Father is because of the suffering and death of Jesus. We didn't make him our Father, just like you didn't make your... Like my boys didn't make... They didn't go to the parent store and pick out their mom and dad. How utterly foolish would that be? No. We're the parents. The same with our Father in Heaven. He made us, he created us, and then he sent his Son to redeem us. And his name... <laughs> his name is his fame. Shem in Hebrew. Um, uh, his name is his fame. His rep. His name says who he is and what he is. It, it says all about him. Um, remember what his name means. Remember what his name means. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus' name means Yahweh saves. His name tells us who he is and what he is and how he is. He is the God who saves. He's the God who saves. Which, this is in a different gospel, so it's cheating, but it is Maundy Thursday. When Jesus prays tonight, um, it's not in tonight's gospel, it was in Monday's gospel, but when he prays, glorify your name. When he says in John 12, now is the time, um, now uh, is the glory of God. Now, when he, God's name is glorified when Jesus hangs there dead on the cross. And so you want to know God's rep, his fame, his reputation. If you want to know how God is, all you need do is look tomorrow, Good Friday. Let your name be unique in our midst. Let it be the only saving thing that happens. For us, our Father, holy is your name. I hope I got all that you wanted, Pastor Rake. If there's more there, uh, please feel free to unpack it. I'll look for it as a gift. A little bit more, shall we? Let your kingdom happen. Now remember, the Lord Jesus has been preaching the kingdom of God is here. Um, he's been preaching the kingdom of God is near. He is 
Um, he is God for us all the way. Um, and, and so he, his, he's here with his gifts. Your kingdom come doesn't only mean the last day. See, the kingdom of God certainly comes even without our prayers, but we pray in this petition that it would come among us also. God's kingdom comes when our heavenly father gives us his Holy Spirit so that we, by his grace, we believe his holy words and lead his holy word and lead godly lives here in time and hereafter in eternity. Tonight, that you believe that your sins are forgiven by the suffering and death of Jesus is God's kingdom coming to you. It's not only that you lead a holy life. That's the fruit of his kingdom coming to you. His kingdom comes to you when you believe his words and promises. When you believe that God has sent his son to die for you. When you believe that God is such a God as that he wouldn't spare Jesus, but he gave up his son in order to save you. When you know for certain that he's going to shut the whole heaven thing down if he doesn't have you there. That's the kingdom of God coming in your midst. And then, enlivened, um, raised from the dead, uh, 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 forgiven, you lead a holy a, a, a life of love and service to your neighbor. But don't go right to the leading a godly life, which is what we all do because we all want to be justified by the law. Don't do that first without first realizing that the fact that you are alive in the faith of Jesus, that you believe that God sent his son, is God sending his kingdom to you. Pastor Simino, me reminding you of something is funny because I'm the old dude who needs to be reminded that I even have a Bible study today, but I'll do my best. Holy your name. Let your kingdom come. Holy your name in our midst. Let your kingdom come to us. Don't let your kingdom come to someone else. Let it come to us. Forgive us our sins. Have mercy on us. Show your love for us so that we poor sinners might believe and be saved. Let your will happen. The good and gracious will of God is done even with our prayers, but we pray in this petition that it would be done amongst us also. God's will. How often, how often, uh, I'm going to have to make the screen large on this one. How often do we Protestants speak of the will of God as if it's somehow, oh, Pastor Yeager's in the house. He called my phone. I texted him. Did you see that? You didn't even see me text him. Pastor, I can't respond to you because I'm doing a Bible study. There's another kid I taught. Um, he was in my youth group when I was a vicar and a pastor. So this is old hour for me. Can you see the grays? A cup here means you can't see the dog. Hey, buddy. Are you alive and well there? Want this treat? No? Sleeping? Nothing? Poor guy. You know, it's hard to be a dog nowadays. It's it's really hard. Everybody's so stressed and yeah, he anyway. How many of us, when we think of the will of God, think the will of God is somehow in flux? What I mean by that is that it may be good for us or maybe not. So often we treat the will of God like, like it's this, this um, exit that we have to get right on the interstate. Uh, Emma, I haven't done anything to tire Thor out. I'm not really sure. He may not be feeling well. Uh, if I would, if uh, he doesn't have the Rona, because dogs can't get the Rona, 
But um, he's just not feeling well lately. He's been dragging. His little puppy butt's been dragging. But how many of us think the will of God is this exit ramp that we have to get on in order for God to love us? This thing that we have to do. We do this with, with our job, our work, our college. What, what, what does God want for me? What is the will of God in my life? And, and so we trouble ourselves. And we worry about these things. We stress about it. It's crippling. It's crippling. And here, the prayer is, let your will happen in our midst. The kingdom of God comes even without our prayers, but we pray in this petition, it'll come among us also. Um, God's name is holy without our asking, but we pray that it will be holy amongst us. The good and gracious will of God. Ha ha ha. Luther, when he looks at this, this petition, marvels at how God's will is always good for us. It's good. It's gracious. The will of God isn't a mystery. Hi, Terry Lynn. The, good, the, the will of God is good for you. It's gracious. It's merciful. Well, what is his will? Luther says. God's will is done when he when he breaks and hinders every plan and purpose of the devil and world and our sinful nature who which do not want us to uh, to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. His will is to save you. His will is to save you. You think that he's neutral on it. You act as if he's uh, neutral on it. As if he, it's somehow in the air. He's not neutral on it. Calvary says he's not neutral on it. He wants to save you. He wants you to be saved. And he went through hell and death in order to win that salvation for you. And so the good and gracious will of God is done when he starts breaking and thwarting all his enemies. All your enemies. Thor is underneath my chair. What's going on here, buddy? Come here. What's going on here, buddy? Are you so antisocial today that you don't want to do anything with anyone? Get yourself in your bed there, bub. The flamingo. First of all, my mother loves flamingos, and so the flamingo reminds me of my mother. Uh, keep her in your prayers. My mother's um, uh, retirement community has um, the Rona shooting through it. Um, also, um, as uh, Erica said, my youth groups in the past have flocked members, filled their yards with, um, with, with these wonderful flamingos in order to extort, I mean, raise money. Um, they sold insurance, which is like, pay us not to flock you. I find that to be um, the height of extortion. It's, it's, and brilliant, brilliant, I might add. 
Um, uh, Pastor Rake's question has to do with these three words. Um, well, there's six of them. Just as in heaven and also on earth. Epites case. Um, ben Hines in the house. Um, I do agree with you, Pastor uh, Pastor Rake. I think because of the quick bullets, um, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, that on earth as it is in heaven stands like for all of them. Your kingdom come on earth as it does in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it, does, as it is in heaven. And, and um, holy your name on earth as it is in heaven. Um. I think that that is a, a great observation, and I think it agrees with it linguistically. Um, and so don't think that the on earth as it is in heaven goes only with um, your will. It's also his kingdom and his name. Continuing on. You notice, by the way, that all of this is about him before we even get to a petition. As we demonstrated yesterday with a classic colic, um, all of this is about him. His name being holy, his kingdom coming, and his will being good and gracious. Before we ever get to anything which um, we ask for. And you could you could also think that the um, what we ask for um, uh, is built on those promises because your name is because your name is holy because your kingdom comes because your will is done um, dose give us give to us your bread, your epiusin. Now, this word, this word, for all of you who get mad at me for making up words, for all of you who get mad at me for making up words, this word doesn't appear in anything. Anything. Anything before its it, its appearance in the Gospels, and so we have absolutely no idea what it means, and we're just guessing. Um, and the best guess that we have universally is daily bread. Um, uh, I mean, it could be. It could be um, uh, well. It could be bread for the next day, for tomorrow. It could be uh, for bread to happen. It could be bread that exists. But I mean, again, um, epiusion. Excuse me, Heinz. Young Heinz. I'm gonna send you to your room soon. Um, be, but before, but, but again, this word has, I mean, look at it down here. You can see it, um, on here just as well as I can that, um, coined by a grave doubt is cast on one possible occurrence, which is independent of our literature. So it, it doesn't appear apart from the gospels. This is a word that's literally unique to Christianity, unique to Jesus. Daily bread. Well, of course. Um, uh, uh, God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayer, says Dr. Luther, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive his daily bread with thanksgiving. Our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Well, daily bread includes everything which has to do 
with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, uh, money, goods. Uh, my memory's going back. Oh, devout husband or wife, devout children. You hear that, boys? Devout children. That has to do with daily bread. Devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, uh, uh, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like, which means everything which is good from God is daily bread. Not just what goes into your belly, but everything. Um, so give us today your daily bread. Give us today your daily bread. And I've often tried to figure out why um, 12 is translated the way it is. Um, it, it really is, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. So... Um, Yes, but we owe first and foremost a debt to God. That's our sin. Um, forgive us our what we owe you, and that's probably how it how it becomes trespasses. But um, uh, this 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 word first and foremost it, it it's it's sort of uh, something that's owed. Um, what would a man give for the whole world? What would a man give in exchange for his life? So I mean, I mean, it's 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 sort of um, certainly makes a lot of sense to um, translate that trespasses. But first and foremost, it's what is owed, and um, that is not going to fly well because we want. Um, we don't want to forgive our debts. We don't want to forgive other people's debts because then we won't get back what they owe us. Surest way to wreck a friendship is to loan somebody money. Why? Well, because they won't pay it back. So there, there's, so our, 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 our that just sort of demonstrates what our God is. Our God is our stuff. That's why we don't want anybody borrowing our stuff because they won't repay it and then, and then we will not be our friends anymore because they, they intruded on that which was most important to us. Now we want to borrow their things and we want to destroy their things and we want to not repay their things. But them, now ah, the rules of borrowing apply. And here, Forgive us our debts. Forgive us what we owe you. As we forgive those who owe us. And trespasses works because um, because what we owe God is sin. We have sin that we need paid. Um, so I, I would just that's the way I would look at it. And yeah, I always look at things when somebody loses stuff. I'm like, it's just stuff. Don't worry about it. It's just things. It's just it, God's going to make more. He's going to give you more. Nothing to worry about. Um, uh, nothing to fret about. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others their debts. That's probably a really good translation of it. But I would not change the Lord's Prayer. I wouldn't tweak it at all. Pray the one that you've memorized because uh, you need to be rescued from the tyranny of clergy, says uh, uh, um, Dr. Luther, who would change your prayers and change your uh, um, 
change your creed to different words. Forgive us our debts as we forgive other people. You know, wait a minute. How many times do we not want to forgive people? That's a, that's a, that's a, a thing for another time. You know, I'll forgive them if they apologize. I'll forgive them if they do this, that, and the other thing. I'll forgive them if they... But we don't act like that with God. God needs to forgive us because, you know, we're really, 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 really sorry. But if somebody apologizes to us, we're like, are you really sorry? Are you truly sorry? I don't have an issue, Mike, with the Presbyterians. I think that what we owe God is our trespasses. Um, I, I don't have an issue with the Presbyterian translation. In fact, it's, it's, um, <coughs> no, I don't have the coronavirus. I just have a <clears throat> allergy attack. But we'll get to forgiving others some other time. Back to the text. And lead us not into temptation or testing. God tempts no one. Luther is like, um, first, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Um, I want to make sure you hear Luther's. We pray in this petition that our Father in Heaven would not look on our on our sins or deny our prayer because of it. We are neither worthy of the things we pray, nor do we deserve them. Uh, but we ask that he would give them all to us by grace for we daily sin much and surely deserve nothing but punishment. So we too will gladly for, uh, forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. Sixth commandment. God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, or other great shame and vice. Although we are assailed, attacked by these things, we pray that we will finally overcome them and win the victory. Yes, I know I'm running out of time. We're going to get through with this. Sandra, I'm almost at 40. Going to get through it. What we pray is that, is, that, is that God would not test us. That he would deliver us from the evil one. That he would rescue us from evil. That he would be the God that he promised to be and save us from evil. From our sins. Don't tempt us, but Rusai, um, rescue us, deliver us from the pana, Poneru, <laughs> from evil. Um, it could be evil one, too. Um, Be the God who saves your people. Be that God. Tempt versus test. God tests. He doesn't tempt. The devil tempts. Same, same word. It's like evil. Ra'ah in Hebrew. Um, you'll hear, you hear God um, repent of the evil he was going to do. Um, it's usually translated calamity because people don't want to hear God doing evil. Um, but when God does bad to us, we think it's evil, but it's actually just um, his discipline. Uh, we're going to finish this. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And, and what, what is so important about this is that when we pray for him to deliver us from evil, we pray that he will deliver us in summary, that he would, that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and 
reputation. And finally, when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end and graciously take us from this valley of sorrow to be with, uh, um, to, to himself in heaven. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Just a quick word on that. That is a liturgical ending, which shows up, you know, I want to say it shows up really early, really, really early as like an appendage to the prayer, um, a doxological end. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, I think it's great. It's not in the original text, but it's certainly a way to ease out of the prayer. Um, uh, and it happens, it flows from the church. So I'm not against thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, even though it's not in this prayer. Now, 13, where we'll start tomorrow, is a devastating bit of law. For if you forgive, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And we're going to start with that tomorrow, but that is really huge as we go into the, the Triduum, the three-day celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection for us, that our sins were answered for on the cross. How could we withhold forgiveness from others? This is a great time to let go of the sins that, that of others. Because God is going to let go of your sin. And if he's going to let go of your sin, how could you not possibly let go of the sins of others? If he's forgiven your debt, how could you not forgive the debts of others? And so when you confess your sins tonight, whether confessing it with a stream or um, in private with your, with your pastor in a small group of less than 10, just remember those sins that you're holding on to from others All you're saying is that Christ loves and died for all except them. And he launches right from his prayer into that. This isn't part of his prayer. But we'll get to it tomorrow. A blessed and happy and um, uh, joyful triduum to you. I leave you with um, the uh, prayer for... Uh, for today, O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your pa uh, passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest among us, amongst us. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Have a blessed night, and I will see you tomorrow, Good Friday, 2 p.m. Central.